Hello everyone. Welcome to a new segment on this channel called Fireside Stories. Uh, today's video is actually about work stories and for those of you who've been a slightly longer term viewer on my channel remember that I had mentioned something about doing story times. Uh, for now you will be getting uh, speed draws about it uh, or at least speed coloring sadly you can't see the actual sketching or line art of this but that's because my camera battery died. <laughs> so <laughs> Um, this story is going to be split into three parts because um, even though I've only had two jobs, not counting uh, volunteer work, my first job was actually split between two years because they were summer jobs. So keep an eye out for the next two parts. So the story begins in the summer of 2017 and little 16 year old me was actually really super excited to start working because before this I had actually started um, a company quote-unquote company called Glitter Jewel Jewelry where I made my own jewelry and sold it in front of my house like a lemonade stand. So I was pretty excited to start making my own money. Um, so I got a summer job at a hot dog place in my city um, and it has a couple booths at my city's biggest music festival. And um, usually like this one is like huge. They have big names like Pink and Imagine Dragons, stuff like that. And this year was the 50th anniversary of um, this festival being around which is actually pretty flippin' cool. Um, and I was lucky enough to actually have my best friend at the time, Izzy. You guys have, if you guys are, again, longtime viewers, um, you guys will have known Izzy at least a little bit in some of the videos, but if not, oh well. Like, it's been years since I posted anything like that. Still love you, Izzy. Um, but yeah, so I was, ex uh, I was really lucky to work with her. And um, in this festival, despite our excitement, we were, <laughs> when we were actually... Um, supposed to her job, so she was my assistant, and I was working register, so she'd bring the food as I rang people up, and we weren't exactly, um, given a chance to train at the registers, oh, no, 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 we were thrown to the wolves, like, we were told, yep, yeah, this is slightly how you work the registers, okay, if you make mistakes, oh, well, just, like, let us yell into the back, and we weren't working the smaller stance either, I guess smaller, quote-unquote, um, we were working right smack dab in the lower amphitheater, which was where they housed the bigger names like Pink, Imagine Dragons, and all of them. And so, you know, it, it was quite busy. Um, so day one was a lot of like us rushing around, getting used to the system. Eventually, we ended up finding our groove. And the first day, it downpoured. Like come like time for the concert right near the start, and it downpoured. So we're sitting here and we're like, all right, well now what do we do? Because we're just cleaning up. Like we don't really have anything to do. We don't have any customers because it's raining. And this one dude stumbles over. He's, he's clearly inebriated. So he's, he's not all there. And he started asking us for chicken, uh, chicken nuggets. Nah, I cannot speak. Um, so, and next to us, we actually had a Wendy's, but the Wendy's stand was closed at this point because it was past the intermission. So, you know, we're we're attempting to explain to him, like, hey, we're not Wendy's, but this is what we have. And eventually, he ended up ordering a brat, you know, with sauerkraut, onions, and mustard on it, you know, the usual stuff, for those of you who know. Um, and so when he, like, I was the one ringing him up, so when he handed me the money, imagine... Uh, imagine, like, there's this slug, this giant slug that's been sitting in your pocket, and you pull out this money, it's just covered in slime. It was so gross. And, ugh, it was, it, my guess, from what I could tell, it was probably, beer probably got spilled on him, it was raining, so of course it's gonna be a little gross. It happens, to the best of us, I know. So, um, eventually, you know, I end up going and washing my hands after giving him his change and everything, because, you. And so they get him his food, and he goes to try and tip us. And for some reason, in his drunken state, he just he couldn't he couldn't find the opening to the tip jar, which is like a big hole right on the top of him. So you know what his next best move was? You want to know? He threw the money through the cashier window. <laughs> this is after like five of my other coworkers, including Izier, like trying to explain to him where the hole in the tip jar is. So. <laughs> Yeah, and that was just day one. So, um, this one's kind of a bit of a little iffier story, but um, sometime during the festival week later on, after we had gotten our groove, um, 
we had this guy come up and he kept insisting he to have ice in his drink and it was just a water bottle um because that's all we served on the grounds and he kept insisting that his wife needed it and the only ice we had was for our you know uh coolers and stuff and mind you that's a a little iffy when you're sitting there and you're putting your hands in it a bunch of times but yeah so that's that and he threatened my coworker, and then escalated to threatening my manager and nearly jumping through the cashier window before security came. And all because he wanted freaking ice in his drink. Which is weird. Um, the fun part about um, this first year, though, um, was working the amphitheater. Like, working the amphitheater is that at some point uh, during one of the shows, or before the show even started, I was past the initial stage person, the elevator to the stage broke and so escorted by her entourage you know past our little tiny like hot dog stand type deal was pink herself legendary pop punk performer pink and that i think was one of the coolest things so she didn't look at us but i think it didn't help that all my coworkers were screaming like being like oh yeah pink but you know i can't i can't blame them you know it's pink what do we expect um, one of the last few stories I remember, and it's a very tiny story, it's not one of the bigger ones, uh, from my first year, is that we weren't allowed to give napkins to non-paying customers, because we only had a limited amount for the season, so we just weren't allowed to hand them out. And this couple comes up, asks for napkins, and I'm like, sorry, like, it's our policy, you gotta pay for something, even if it's just a water, and they start, they, they reamed me and my coworker out, calling us bastards. And then they left our line, whatever, and when our line cleared, they came past flashing the napkins in the mirror and being like, Wendy's got us covered, you fuckers. And (laughs) I'm sitting here, and I'm like, alright, I don't care if Wendy's gave me napkins, they're a big corporation. Like, I'm just doing my job, okay? Like, I'm sitting here, little 16-year-old me does not need to deal with your bullshit, Okay? But, I mean, I've gotten better in the workforce, obviously. Like, I I mean, I obviously didn't say that um, in person. That was in my head. But, like, afterwards, (laughs) I mean, Izzy were just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, But that's all I can kind of remember from the first year, other than, like, a couple of fights that might have broken out. Um, Not in our stand. Um, It was more outside our stand. Um, But I had also worked Irish Fest that year. It wasn't very entertaining. I don't, other than... Other than this um, actual Irishman, you know, he had the accent, he said he was visiting in, and he didn't know what a corn dog was. And so, when I told him it, when I told him what a corn dog was, and you know, obviously I did it with my, like, a little better than customer, certain normal customer service, and he was so excited to try a corn dog. And it just makes my heart burst thinking of that, you know, just the, this this man who's never had a corn dog, you know, is sitting here ready to try a corn dog, and that that was pretty pretty freaking awesome. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, other than working eight hours for my first time that year, it was it was a lot, you know. Um, but I definitely figured out what shoes to wear, for sure. Um, I didn't wear heels or anything, but that'd be weird. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's part one of work stories. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And yeah, the final picture from what you saw is right here. It doesn't look the greatest quality because my phone doesn't have the greatest quality. So I'm very sorry. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in part two of work stories. Later.